Fox News alert. A new fallout today to a very public exit from Goldman Sachs. Greg Smith wrote an op-ed in the New York Times explaining why he was quitting his job as an executive at the company. It was published on Wednesday. Now, former Federal Reserve Chairman Paul Volcker is chiming in, saying Smith's letter is a reflection of how the trading culture has changed. This guy, Smith, in the New York Times wrote, quote, I believe I have worked here long enough to understand the trajectory of its, meaning Goldman Sachs, culture, its people, and its identity. And I can honestly say that the environment now is as toxic and destructive as I have ever seen it. Joining me now, Thomas Belisis, CEO and founder of John Thomas Financial. So you're a big Wall Street guy, actually featured in the movie Wall Street 2, Money Never correct. Sleeps. <laughs> uh, so we wanted to ask you what you make of this guy. Is he, is he a villain or is he a hero? You know, I think he's a villain, and I don't agree with this assessment because you can't take a company of Goldman Sachs, Megan, that employs 30,000 people, that has a reach throughout the entire globe and manages $840 billion and think that any of the claims that this individual, Greg, said hold any merit. I don't believe it. it when you read the op-ed, in part it boils down to the, the folks who work at Goldman want one thing above all else, and that's to make money. Listen, it, uh, should we should we run the alert animation there? <laughs> the, the bankers at Goldman Sachs would like to make money. They, it, it, you tell me, because I'm not as steeped in Wall sure. Street as you are. But it seems like if you want to if you want to work for a charitable charitable organization, you know not to go work at Wall Street. Listen, that is you know not true. Listen, it's okay to make money. Listen, his fact of saying in his op-ed that Goldman is ripping off the clients is not true. You don't get to a size of Goldman Sachs by ripping off clients. It just doesn't work like that. I mean, they're one of the most well-respected investment banks throughout the world. So I think this is a disgruntled employee that maybe just didn't perform. His competitive nature just lost with what's going on in the financial community. And he got to a day where he wanted to write a very negative outfit about his employer. The, the Times is writing this story. Many on the left are writing this story. Uh, they like regulation of Wall Street. They don't like a lot of folks on Wall Street like yourself, the sure. one percenters. And we've seen uh, people literally taking to the streets to, to oppose the making of money. To that level uh, for months now. Who is this guy? Is this a major guy at Goldman Sachs where this is that big a story? No, this is one employee out of 30,000. That decided to go. How many out vice there. presidents are there at Goldman Sachs? I mean, I don't know the exact number. Thousands? I'm sure thousands, but I mean, you're talking about one employee out of 30,000 that wanted to say a bad thing about Goldman Sachs. Now, the papers are picking it up like this is a great story because over the last four or five years, the financial computer, uh, community, unfortunately, has a bad name for it with what's happened with the 2008 crisis. But I don't believe anything that this individual has said. I mean, said in, about in the Sachs, rank of Goldman true. Sachs, where does this guy fall? Is he high? Is he middle? Is he low? He's probably the lowest on the totem pole. So how does this get made into a, ma a major story? I mean, you, at any organization out there, you have a, middle, a, a lower or middle-level employee who leaves and writes an op-ed about why they hate their company, right? That happens. People hate their companies and they leave. Right. How does this wind up in the New York Times getting this much attention as it's gotten? Well, it's a sexy story to some news reporter at a major financial paper. And, you know, with what's going on in the financial services industry these days, they like it, they pick it up, and they want to run with it. And that's exactly what happened here. He does talk about at Goldman how there's an attitude about callously ripping off the clients. Now, Goldman wants to make money for itself, but it needs to also make money for its clients. Is it true? I mean, just because he writes it in a, in a way that's not that kind to Goldman doesn't mean it's false. Is it true? Is it possibly true? Is it something we need to look into if whether the nation's, one of the nation's biggest, most respected investment banks is basically playing its clients for a bunch of chumps. In my opinion, Megan, those allegations are false. Let me tell you why. The list of clients span the gamut with Goldman Sachs from high individuals, high net worth individuals, corporations, and sovereign nations. They wouldn't be at Goldman Sachs if Goldman Sachs was ripping them off. It doesn't work like that. Those clients would leave and go elsewhere. So there's no truth, in my opinion, to what he's saying about Is that. Is this guy ever going to work on Wall Street again, Mr. Smith? I don't think. Uh, I think he's going to have a very tough time. <laughs> the other thing is you have to wonder where he is going to work. Because if, he le if this is what he does when he leaves, you're you know, gonna, are you likely to hire Greg Smith? you got to be a little worried if he turns against right. you what that's, he's going to do next. That's right. <laughs> uh, in any event, thank you, sir. We appreciate it. What would you do when Wall Street never sleeps? Uh, I had three or four nice scenes in a movie. You so. did? Yeah, yeah. You're a power broker. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. Thank you. Oh, wait, man. here it is. We've got you. What do we have? There you are. That's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. We remember you. Great job. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs>